It's 2016, which means we are now in the future with flying cars that fit into briefcases. Not really, but video games have never been more advanced. And though we all complain about things in NHL 17, it has never been a better time on earth to be a spoiled gamer in a first world country. Despite the fact that we have near perfect replicas of arenas, players, game rules, announcers, etc., there are still major differences between real life hockey and NHL 17. Obviously, we will never be able to fully replicate the gaming experience to match what is in real life. Otherwise, we'd be very confused participants in the matrix wondering if we are the one. But what we can do is look at the video game and compare it to real life and see just how close we are. Here are some major differences between the NHL and NHL 17. Let's look at time constraints. So for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to use both HUT and online ranked gameplay as the best gauge to compare to reality. I do realize that game modes such as EASHL and Be A Pro have their own subtle differences from reality, but I need a constant for comparison. And the first order of business we have to deal with is time constraints. EA very smartly condenses games into four minute periods so that you do not have to endure a full 60 minute game and have to dedicate two to three hours to a tilt. The average online game lasts between 20 and 25 minutes depending on whether you have a self-glossing replay watching bitch as an opponent. Let's look at how time constraints affect the realism of a game from a scientific standpoint. First, let's start with a real NHL game. Obviously, each period is 20 minutes. Okay, easy. It should last an hour. But the true average game length is about 2 hours and 20 minutes, or 150 minutes total. So we have two intermissions that last 18 minutes each, subtract 36 minutes. That leaves us with 114 minutes now of game. 60 of that is actual clock running, puck in motion play. So now we have a whopping 54 minutes of stoppage time, which includes penalties, offsides, icings, puck out of play, TV timeouts, incidental stoppings, and of course, goals. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio of play versus stoppage for an NHL game. For NHL 17, you have 12 minutes of game play, yet an online game lasts about 20 minutes with very little time for intermissions and stoppages a better ratio for gameplay because there is less BS standing in our way from playing. So how does this actually affect games? Let's see. The average NHL team shoots the puck on net 30.55 times a game. That's one shot for one team for every other minute of gameplay, a 0.5% shot to minute ratio. Compared to NHL 17, the average shot count is about 18 per 20 per game. That's a much higher shot per minute rate, 1.66% shot to minute ratio. That means basically pucks are flying towards the net in the video game three times as much as in real life. But in terms of total game, NHL 17 features a third less shot. Is your mind blown yet? So let's talk goals. Even though scoring is down now, the average NHL team pots about 2.7 goals per game. Let's add that up. 30 shots per game nets 2.7 goals for a shooting percentage of about 9%. 9% of NHL shots on net go in. Compare that to NHL 17, where top players average about 3.5 goals per game, some even as high as 5 on about 19 shots per game for a shooting percentage of 18%. That's double that of the NHL. It means shots are way more accurate in the game than nearly humanly possible. And yes, I get it. You don't want to play a boring game that features lots of shots and no goals. However, the level of accuracy that players exhibit in a video game is beyond that of realistic. The highest scoring season ever was in 1981, which each team averaged four goals a game, and the goalies were dressed like they were playing in the lingerie bowl. But since then, scoring is down now because goalies now look like they stepped out of Titanfall. So in terms of gameplay in the game, yes, players score goals that are similar to real goals, but a much higher and more frequent pace. Yes, the deadly snipes in NHL games happen, but not like in the video game. I don't know if this can ever be fixed as nobody wants to play a 114 minute game each time we get online. 
because I barely have two hours a day to masturbate and cry myself to sleep. Now, let's talk actual gameplay and how the game is executed on the real sheet of ice versus the pixelated one. The first thing I notice about real NHL hockey is some things happen a lot that do not happen in the video game much. In real life, the puck is skied out of the zone often for a clear and doesn't result in an icing. In real life, the puck is chipped into the zone past the red line, often to avoid icing. In real life, breakouts happen a lot from behind the net. There are more set plays, more smart takes into the zone, more dumping of the puck, and overall typically better positioning. These guys get paid to play hockey and are incredible at it. In NHL 17, not that everyone plays this way, it looks more like pond hockey. Players get the puck and race up the ice. More often than not, players skate into the zone and look to shoot. Set plays? Yeah, right. Again in the game, again the game looks more like pickup basketball than the well thought out and planned version that is real life. Now, this really isn't EA's fault. They have no control on how a human plays the game. And most players like myself don't have the patience to play methodic, controlled, real life hockey like we were paid to do so. Additionally, the programmers have to ensure that the AI of the computer players is close to real life, which is obviously difficult. Cut these guys some slack. You're asking them to literally write code that makes a drone behave like a human. When Siri can barely understand what you mean when you say, Siri, Google local strip clubs near me, do you think a programmer can recreate the most realistic behavior for a computer drone to play hockey? Remember, only two players are being controlled by a human on the ice. That leaves 10 players that the computer has to account for at all times. So yeah, they're gonna do stupid maddening things that make you wanna break your controller and punch a stranger. And until we can copy a player's real tendencies to a thumb drive and make it real, that's not gonna change. Now, let's look at the gameplay engine. EA has stated that they want organic outcomes on the ice, which is another video entirely. But what do they mean by that? It means they don't want to see scripted plays or sequences in the game, though many times it feels like that is happening. And they want a true random experience for the players. But why do the games not feel organic many times? Because at the core of our games, the human players look to trigger animations that result in positive outcomes. The way programming works, and this is mind-blowing, is that the code for every sequence that can possibly occur, whether random or not, has to, has to be written into the game before it ever happens. The game engine has to map out where the puck is, where your player is, what percentage of the shot or move is, what animation is occurring at the time, and all at once. If you cannot account for all of this, you see glitches and instability. Or like in ancient times of Tecmo Bowl or Blades of Steel, you see very little variability in gameplay and it results in a less than user experience. It literally is like living in the matrix. Though the game doesn't know the outcome of a matchup before it starts, all the code is there. In real life, of course, anything can happen. Wild goals happen, wild sequences. I don't know if we'll ever get to that level of variability in video games, but we still have to think the games we play as they are now are incredible marvels of technology that we can even get close. Let's back up to something I said earlier about triggering animations. You have a controller and a set list of functions for that controller. Deeks, shots, movements, all those things are pre-scripted animations that have been created by programming. Yes, real NHL players have repeatable moves, however we really aren't given the options real players have because, duh, this is a video game. Examples include passing around defenders, trying to keep the puck in the zone at the blue line, things where a normal human being would recognize the situation, but a computer animated player cannot behave that way and also doesn't care. Secondary to that, some animations are available to low rated players, but yet they can still pull off the move because the preset controls allow us to do them. For example, Tanner Glass can toe drag and fake out the goalie sometimes when we all know in real life all Tanner Glass can do is skate around and punch people in the face. To be fair to Tanner, he has scored some very ugly, ugly goals in his lifetime. And that leads me to my last point. 
is that we will never be able to fully replicate true player movements or tendencies. The amount of time required to capture all those animations and movements is simply beyond that of what resources are available to construct a virtual reality. You'd have to motion capture every athlete in the NHL doing almost every single move they do, and that's just crazy. The motion capture technology is amazing, but there isn't really a scan or copy method to capture all of that. Now, as the game grows, more and more things are captured and saved into the game, and the repository builds. But just like making AI players think like humans, it's pretty hard to get players to move truly like humans do as well. I think honestly there are more resources being put around real warfare, shooting games, and porn to make the virtualization effort worthwhile. But who knows what sports games will look like in 5 to 10 years. Shoot, when I was a kid, just being able to play hockey on my Nintendo was good enough, and the underwear section in the Sears catalog got the job done. Got any comments or feedback? Leave a comment or subscribe and let me know what else is missing in the game. I'm Five Points Gaming and you made it to the end of this video.